I want to talk about plenty uh, as an alternative for farmers in perhaps a greener future. We've seen so many farmers lose their crops, so many vineyards across the region destroyed. How is plenty an alternative? Well, first of all, thanks for having me and ha having us, Emily. Um, I, I would say to that question, you know, we, we consider ourselves and our farms at Plenty to be, uh, in addition to the, the capacity that already exists uh, out in the field, you know, the world is already, uh, you know, we need about 70% more fruits and vegetables for the world to enjoy a nutrient rich diet. And, you know, so we need more capacity, uh, not less. So we're, we're doing our best to, uh, you know, to add to that. So talk to us about the technology and how much of it is reality at this point and how much of it is still moonshot. Well, you're, you're looking at, uh, at one of our growing rooms behind you. You know, our, our farms produce, first of all, the, what comes out of them tastes very different from what uh, people are used to. Uh, because we're able to control those those recipes of climate and light uh, in in ways that haven't been possible before, uh, climate, light, stress, nutrients, those are the things that really drive flavor. And uh, you know, on the farm that I grew up on, uh, we couldn't control those things. So uh, you know, so the farm is real. We're on shelves today, and and we're working to bring the the food that comes out of our farms to to more people by expanding to our Compton farm uh, in uh, in 2021. Whole Foods sells some of your products. What other grocery stores are your clients? Well, the you know you you may have seen we've recently announced uh, a, uh, a a partnership with Albertsons, uh, so we're in many of their their Safeway stores today, uh, and uh, yeah, are expanding that pilot over the course of the next year, uh, and then with the opening of that Compton Farm, we'll be able to uh, we're planning to serve about 430 stores across California. Uh, through that Compton Farm, and then with Whole Foods, and then some of our other local uh, grocery partner chains, uh, we're working to reach as many people in uh, in California as we can through our California farms. You're you're planning to sell strawberries with Driscolls as a huge strawberry consumer um, with four children in the house. Are these going to be co-branded? How will the pricing points compare? Um, talk to us a little bit about how how it will work. Well, here's what we know. You know, we're 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 neighbors down the road from one another, so to speak. And uh, by bringing the farm inside, as we've done, uh, you know, in, in agriculture, growing fruits and vegetables is about uh, c combining land, uh, the right climate for a specific crop, and then making sure you have the water and growing season necessary for that crop. Well, uh, you know, as as you bring the farm inside, you now control all of those things. And the world has run out of land in the places where it's economic and all of those things exist in the same place, uh, particularly for berries. And so, uh, you know, what, what we think it'll mean for people is we get to, to uh, perfect the berry, you know, work along with Driscoll's, with our expertise, with their expertise uh, and, their, and their berries to, to, to pair the perfect recipe with the perfect berry and give people something they never had before, which is day in and day out, all year long, the most, you know, most mind-blowing berry experience. So that's our aspiration anyway. And, uh, and so that's what we think it's going to mean is, more, uh, is better berries for more people uh, because we, we, we help relieve those constraints as to where berries can be grown around the world. Now, given the fires that are raging, the extreme weather we've been facing, concerns about climate change, what is Plenty's role in a greener future? Is this actually a greener way to grow things? I mean, when you're controlling the, the temperature of the room, the light, it's almost a little Truman Show. Yeah, it's, it's pretty spectacular to, to walk into one of our farms. But, you know, one of the things, if you recall, I mentioned that we need about 70% more fruits and vegetables for the world to, to have what's considered a healthy diet and have the nutrient-rich fruits and vegetables that we need. That would require today, you know, that we, for example, mow down an area roughly the size of the Amazon. And with those wildfire f fires you were just talking about, I, I don't think, I think we can agree we can't afford to, to mow down anymore. So, um, uh, you know, f the footprint that we enable the food chain to have uh, is very favorable relative to any other option available uh, to us today. And then when you think about water, uh, you know, the, the West is already parched 
We rely on places like California for a significant percentage of our fruits and vegetables uh, as, as the most prolific region in the world for, for most fruits and vegetables. And so, you know, we save about a million gallons a week uh, through, through one of our farms. And, and you, there are parts of the Central Valley, for example, that are an entire telephone pole lower today than they were a century ago because of the rate at which we have been extracting water from the, from the ground. So when you look at water footprint, you look at carbon footprint, and you look really at just what the alternatives are as to where we're going to get our agricultural capacity, uh, that's where we are excited to be able to, to, to add to the portfolio of what's, uh, what's available.